Okay, perfect. Um, can you hear me okay, yeah? Perfect, excellent, thank you very much. Loads of thumbs up. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, thanks for the invite, Rob. And as Rob said, my name is Mark Lynn and I'll be speaking along with my colleague, Keith Hickey, who I'll introduce you to now in a second. But we were faced with a challenge of uh, collecting video-based assignments, even pre-COVID, um, which has turned everybody's lives upside down. We were faced with the challenge of how do we manage uh, video-based assessments? And what what I want to do is to introduce you to my colleague Keith. He's going to give an engineering uh, perspective on, on this and what his demands were um, from a, an individual faculty's point of view. And then I'll come back in to uh, show how we've addressed it. And time permitting, I will have a, uh, a quick demonstration for you as well. So I'll hand over to Keith now. And um, Keith, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mark. And uh, thanks, Rob, for inviting me to speak today. Uh, hello, everybody. So my name is Keith Hickey, and I'm the Education Technology Manager in the Faculty of Engineering and Computing. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the challenges we faced with uh, video assessments and how Unicam became part of the video assessment process for us in DCU. So particularly in engineering, we use video assessments across our faculty for final year and taught master project presentations. Um, also third year group project presentations. So over the years, it's been quite challenging and logistically difficult to organize all of these. So some of those challenges that we faced were um, trying to uh, book rooms, timetables, students and supervisors, uh, the likes of setting up computers and webcams, um, organizing postgrads to manage the recordings, and then obviously what do you do with the recordings after um, post recording? You know, where do you where do you store them? Do you store them in the cloud and uh, and so forth? So, so we had the plan for a more efficient approach for the recording of video assessments, and the new goal was to have numerous rooms set up with ceiling mounted PTZ cameras and microphones that could be controlled from a wall mounted Android tablet. So students could then walk into any of these rooms without having to set up any equipment and make numerous recordings and send them on to their supervisors. So that was our goal. So researching and installing the hardware was actually the easiest part of the project we found. So some of the problems we now face was actually finding the application that could interact with our cameras. So this application needed to be very user friendly and it needed to, we needed to be able to store the video files in the cloud. So the Teaching Enhancement Unit in DCU put me in touch with a colleague in the School of Nursing, Patrick Doyle, um, because they were using an Android-based application to record their student nurses practicing um, clinical skills. So this application was called Unicam, and it could control and record uh, a feed from a PTZ IP camera. So over the course of the following six years, we started in 2014, um, so over the, over the course of those six years, the Teaching Enhancement Unit and the Faculty of Engineering, Computing and the Faculty of Science and Health worked closely with Unicam to develop to a version we're at now, which is a, it's a fully Moodle integrated video assessment tool um, that can record from multiple devices and cameras. Um, it also has the added features of being able to record to Google Drive. It can translate audio um, you know, into any language, which we call this process transcription. Um, it can record picture in picture and it has the option to save them as separate video files. Um, it also has some nice post, post recording tools like uh, trimming videos and you can save separate audio files of your videos as well. And then the last um, um, part is uh, it has a live broadcasting feature also. So overall DCU has made a substantial investment in the development of Unicam. And in 2016, we won the President's Award for Innovation. And uh, just recently, we won a new commercialization award with Unicam. So our goal at the beginning of this journey was, was to find a more efficient approach for video assessment. And, and we've, we've achieved this with great success. So that's just a brief, a brief history of Unicam and how it's become a very important assessment tool for us in DCU. So thanks very much. Thanks, Keith. And I'll um, 
<clears throat> take over from there and follow up from what Keith was saying, uh, it's a, where he was able to give the engineering perspective recording multi, uh, the, the presentations of final year students, we were finding across the university that video was much more than just multimedia courses, standard normal courses needed video. Um, <clears throat> Keith mentioned Pastor Kiki in the School of Nursing. They have the OSCEs, the clinical exams. Uh, which need to be done, bed making, drug administration, uh, stitching, all of those that are uh, practical activities that need to be done. Um, so it, the use of video wasn't restricted to multimedia courses that's there. We were very aware of existing commercial platforms, that, which are brilliant, not, not uh, giving out about them whatsoever. Um, they each had their own skills, whether it was Kaltura or, or Panopto or Ubicast. They each had their own advantages and disadvantages for them, but they all didn't do everything that we wanted to do. Uh, all the features that Keith had outlined there, uh, secure storage in Google Drive, easy sharing, easy for people to use and, and record and so on. And we wanted to go beyond just recording on a fixed camera within a room. We wanted them to be able to record with any device, whether they were recording doing a screencast or whether they were recording on their mobile phone or indeed with, with high-end cameras. We knew that students were going to come with so many different demands, so many different uh, approaches would be, would be required. And as we started to look at the commercial platforms that existed, the bills were just going up and up and up and the annual licenses of these things. And one of the major challenges we had with all of the platforms was the more you used it, the more expensive it became because storage of video is an issue. Storage in terms of size, but also storage in terms of data protection. Um, the final challenge that we faced was because we were capturing all these videos from all the different devices, whether it was an Android or an Apple, or whether it was a tablet or a, or a laptop, or indeed a, a, a PTZ camera, which is a pan, tilt, zoom cameras, they all come with different file formats. And where we're all familiar with Word document is a dot doc and um, an Excel spread is a dot XLS. The amount of dots after all the video formats is just so confusing, it's, it's unreal. And what would happen is um, David, but say, for example, in the GEA could be getting some of his coaches to record a video in practice. Um, but then when they'd submit the video to David, he wouldn't be able to open it because he didn't have the right software on his phone or on his computer and so on. Um, <clears throat> so what we wanted to be able to do was to remove the headache of sharing it. And you can have sharing on a memory stick and post a memory stick, but that's just fraught with problems. And indeed, we are, as a Google college, we, each student and staff member has their own YouTube account, so you can be private and loan listed and public. Again, wasn't they were some so able to solve some problems, but not everything. Unicam solved everything that we needed because what it does is it easily shares the video from the student's device, whatever it may be, to the lecturer and submit it as an assignment. Um, <clears throat> and what I'll do actually now is I will uh, give you a, a quick demo. So uh, if you could just give me a thumbs up if you can see the Unicam screen here. Yeah, great stuff. So uh, conscious of time, I logged into the screen earlier on. I logged in as, as a particular student. A student is greeted with three options. In this case, record, create a screencast, record from a camera, and they'd have to have an, an access code to, to record the camera, which is only visible in that room, or you can upload from your device. Here's some I prepared earlier, just in the interest of speed. <clears throat> Here's uh, three videos that I'd uploaded earlier on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this video. And it doesn't matter what it is. In this case, it's a Donald Trump skit. But here I'm uh, greeted with the option of submitting to Moodle. So when I click submit to Moodle, you will see on the screen it calls up the assessments. And it doesn't matter what course or module this is belonged to, it would call up all of my assessments that I have. And then I will literally click, I'm going to submit to this one here. And it tells me the video has been submitted to, uh, uh, submitted to that assignment. It should pop up now in one second and say that. There we go, video is done. So it's taken from the student's device, uploaded to their Google Drive, and then the appropriate permissions are changed within Moodle and within Google Drive to ensure anybody that has a, um, a non-editing teacher or above 
permissions within uh, Moodle. So a teacher, a manager, or indeed an administrator will have access to that video, um, but nobody else will. That was a big thing for us, the security, because we have um, an awful lot of teachers doing early childhood. We have uh, PE exercises that could be done. We have nursing videos that could be done and captured um, in hospitals. So we wanted to keep everything as private as possible and private by default. And we wanted to make it easy as, uh, as uh, possible. Now you also have the option if you do decide to make the video that you've uh, <clears throat> that you've collected, you can uh, embed it in your in your uh, e-portfolio. For example, where we were talking about the the OSCEs, the clinical skills, they can embed it in the e-portfolio, or they can send a link, a public link, for somebody to access, uh, assuming it's not uh, sensitive material. But it puts the control back in the users, and you'll see it makes it as easy as possible to submit the videos. And that's what we are aiming for um, across all faculties now. And this is available for all students and all staff. Well, it started off as, as an idea has morphed into a campus company and is now spread out and they're, 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 they've gone public with it essentially uh, for us. And it's built on an academic um, requirements built by academics, built by ourselves. And the key integration with Moodle has uh, proved vital for us because we've made it easy for students to make the submissions. We link to Google Drive, but equally it interfaces with um, Microsoft OneDrive or indeed any um, server-based platform that you, you, you want to integrate it with. It's just, a, it's just easy. That's all we want to do is to make the process easy. And because we feel particularly now since COVID, like we had over 2,700 videos were submitted through the platform. And as you'll see now how easy that is, you understand why we've had so many students ended up doing it. And that's it. That's, that's my session done. Hi, thanks, Rob. Okay, can you see my slides? Just my slides? Hopefully. Yep, your slides are good. Good. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk today about how we manage our online content at Dublin Business School. Um, so just in the context of the um, Digicom Edu framework, this is just to, this comes under the um, digital resources competencies of creating and modifying digital resources and managing, protecting and sharing digital resources. Um, so this is obviously nothing to do with digital resources. Um, this is, so this, uh, the journey that I'm talking about today um, really started, uh, well, when I first joined DBS in 2018, um, and then, but I first talked about this last summer at the Irish EdTech Conference. So it was just of last summer, and this is actually taken from my home, just above, uh, above my house, um, the day I got back from EdTech. Um, so I presented, I was asked by Panopto to join them to present a short talk on our Zoom, Panopto and Moodle integration, um, which we've been using to run, we've been running online diploma courses for um, a few semesters, a few intakes at DBS, and which were taking part using um, Zoom, almost entirely on Zoom, um, live Zoom classes, which were being recorded. Um, so the challenge that, that we'd had at the time when I first started was how to um, how to make these recordings quickly, easily and securely available to the students um, as they were the main resource of the course. Um, so at the beginning of that year, September 2018, we started um, a pilot year with Panopto and I saw then the, the um, opportunity that um, we needed to take to to make the connection between Panopto Moodle and also Panopto, which we did in our original implementation, and then saw there was an opportunity to connect Panopto with Zoom. Um, so we, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much where we were last summer. Um, and then moving forward to September, 2019, um, we started to become a DBS, we was developing um, what we eventually called ourselves as an online learning team, which consisted of myself as learning technologist, Anna Sitskovska, our new um, instructional designer, 
and my first hire at DBS. Um, Bernadette Higgins, I think both of these two are on the call today, who's, who was our I lead. Um, and we started work in September on two new projects which would involve our integration in a number of new ways. Uh, the first was to assist in the delivery of a number of blended modules, which the college was introducing into some of its normal face-to-face -face type delivered programs. Um, our team worked with, with teachers on these program on these modules to record their lessons, which we used, did use in the Panopto recorder app, um, and then use these to create weekly on-demand lessons for the, for the students on these modules. And these were then delivered to the class prior to their class, which was either a live online class using Zoom or an on-site class. And I think there was roughly a ratio of four to one online to on-site. Um, the lessons were created, the lessons, the on-demand lessons were created using Articulate Storyline. Um, but so we kind of packaged our videos in, in Storyline um, uh, lessons, but the videos themselves remained hosted on Panopto and were embedded into the packages. And the Zoom classes were all recorded and made available in, in Moodle also. So the second ones of our parts of our project in September was to try and increase the usage of Panopto for lecture capture for live on-site classes. Um, this was at the time, well, it, it is an opt-in feature at, at DBS. And we were, to be honest, struggling with this, um, with a sign up for this. Um, also happened in, towards the end of that uh, last year, the integration um, between Panopto and Zoom was updated. Um, it, the original integration that had been actually developed by Zoom, and then when Panopto realized how many people were trying to use it, they actually decided to rebuild it from the ground up. Um, and so they put in, created a new integration, which is actually a lot easier to manage. You manage it from Panopto end rather than Zoom end, and um, it has some new functionality. So it now includes um, you can include the chat. Um, the chat will come into the discussion option uh, area in, in Panopto. And it includes a kind of a timestamp for all, and all the attendees in the, in the contents. Um, so we were now using this integration um, more in DBS. But to be frank, at that point, there was really the problem, you know, most students were getting through life without using Zoom or, DB, or Panopto or being aware of them. Um, so, but the experience that we were gaining as a team was going to be invaluable to us. Um, we, we added to our team in February, we got a, an audio visual technician, um, which was about a month prior to lockdown. So it was excellent timing on our part. So then all this happened. Um, and of course everything changed. I, I just had to put, put this, We've had it for about 25 years. My husband found it um, at a gig he worked at, and it's been, been on my wall most of that time. And it wasn't until about three weeks into the lockdown, when I've been sitting there staring at it for three weeks, I actually noticed what the word said. So I just thought that uh, that was just to demonstrate the change that we all went through. So how have we all used it now? The answer is massively, hugely, incredibly, sometimes really badly, but a lot. I mean, in the first, I mean, as I'm sure most people on this call have experienced their lives being turned upside down since March. Um, these graphs just show a real overview. I mean, that, the Zoom meetings, that's over 12 months. That's monthly usage over 12 months. And the Panopto graph, I think it's actually fortnightly, mostly, but I missed a few in February because we were a bit busy training. Um, but generally, you know, you can see, you get the general idea. Um, my colleague, our esteemed team leader, uh, Tony Murphy, put it most succinctly. We, we wrote, um, uh, we, we published, or he wrote, and we published uh, a new teaching and learning strategy at the end of 2019 called Slate, which was approved by academic board, I think right just before Christmas. And we had this stated intention, which I thought was ambitious at the time, and I told him. <laughs> that to put 50% of our teaching online or blended um, within three years. Uh, obviously, a few months later, we've put 100% of our teaching and assessment and examinations completely online in a few days and weeks. Um, so it was a bit nuts. Uh, in addition to this, we've been using, in addition to the teaching and learning side and assessment, we've also been using the Zoom um, for 
a combination for staff training. We've run open evenings on Zoom. We have a student support desk and a library desk that are current, constantly open using Zoom. Um, so there's a lot, you know, obviously huge amounts more usage of it in the college. So just a quick slide on what the integration actually looks like. Just trying to keep an eye on my time here. Um, so Panopto is a cloud-based video streaming service. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. Um, it has um, recording tools that you can use to screen capture and video recording and then some kind of minor editing tools and the ability to live stream, which has become really very valuable to us. We've used that a lot. Um, Zoom is, this is Zoom. It's our, but for us, it's, we call it virtual classroom. We actually have a number of shared accounts that we use that we allocate like rooms in the timetable now called V-class accounts. So virtual classroom accounts. And obviously Moodle is our everything else. It's our access. To, to all these systems. Uh, it's our student, it's the, sorry, it's the student's access, the frontline access. So Panopto integrates with Zoom and uh, through um, an APR connection and Panopto also integrates very closely with Moodle. Um, so it provides, provides the bridge that makes the Zoom class recordings easily and securely available to the students who've attended them. So the Zoom classes are recorded to the Zoom cloud and they automatically um, are transferred to a specified folder in Panopto. Um, and then once the, once the uh, upload is complete, the, trans the uh, original video is deleted from Zoom. That's very useful to us because I've, as everyone probably knows, Zoom storage is very expensive and it's not really designed. They don't want you to store lots of video there. And it, it was becoming a bit of an issue to have to go in and delete the recordings all the time. So that automated recording was a very useful feature. Um, once it's in Panopto, it's up to the lecturer to move their recording into their class, into the class folder. And every Panop, every Moodle page or Moodle course has a Panopto folder and the folder inherits the um, access rights from the Moodle page. So if you're a teacher on the Moodle page, then you have um, creator rights on the uh, an octave folder and if you're a student you have viewer rights um, so all this all the lecturer needs to do is to move it from their my folder into the, their class folder and they have access to all the classes they are teacher on and it's a very simple process to move it um, you just literally change the folder in the settings and then that's automatically accessible by the students um, this makes it life very easy for us. Obviously, I mean, we have single sign-on between Moodle and um, Panopto, so all of the um, all the user accounts are automatically created. Um, and uh, it, the that it's in itself, Moodle is also linked to our student information system and uh, timetabling systems. So it creates, so there's a, there's a lot of integration and automation, which is, makes our life um, fairly straightforward. Well, that part of it anyway. Um, so this is a, a screenshot, an example of how um, our Panopto content or Zoom content gets um, displayed in Moodle. So this is a, this particular example is a playlist that the, the lecturer has created in Panopto, so um, and then embedded that you can embed that playlist in a label on the Moodle page. You can also create links to individual, um, obviously, to individual videos or embed individual videos on the page. Now, obviously, one of the big changes that has been happening now is that lecturers, so that our basic our um, kind of reaction to the lockdown has been that our video, all our lectures have been either pre-recording content at home on Panopto and publishing it in time for the timetable class, or they've been um, live streaming to large groups using Panopto live streaming and answering questions through the Panopto discussion, or they've been live streaming using 
uh, like having holding live classes on Zoom. So they've been given the option of three of those three different delivery methods and, and a combination and using a combination of those three methods. So using the Panopto recorder, they can record their content from home. Um, we've been encouraging them to create collections of short videos, um, which are usually voice over PowerPoints, or they might be voice over screencasts if they're showing examples, practical examples of things, and sometimes person to camera. Um, but we all know people like to avoid that. Um, so they can so they can create their content. They move them into their class folders, and they can copy and they can make copies of them if they have more than one class um, using the same content. Um, and then they have this variety of ways that they can actually make it available to students. If they do nothing except put it in the right folder, then the recording appears on the Panopto block automatically on the right pane of the screen. Um, but we do encourage them to try and make it more obvious and more prominent um, on the Moodle page by either embedding them or linking to them. So, um, on to assessments. I thought a picture of a nice empty exam hall, which is obviously what we've all just, uh, just been through. Two minute uh, warning there, Isabel. Okay, right. So just to say that we're using, um, we've using, been using Zoom for group presentations and the Panopto assignment folder feature for individual presentations. Um, so that's just a screenshot of a, an assignments folder with all student presentations that they've, they've been using, they can use the Panopto app to either record content or record or upload content that they record from their phone or on their computer. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit, or just show you some of the ways that um, this whole setup has made uh, life so much easier for us at DBS. Um, it's provided security and compliancy for all our video content. Um, as everything's in, inherited from Moodle, um, we don't have to worry about um, managing access rights to videos. Um, the videos themselves are not downloadable and they're not forwardable. You can't forward the links to any other, so the students can't forward links to any other students. Um, we have, um, as well as having a very compliant and functional video player, the Panopto video player, we can also use um, get closed captions, um, which, uh, which are usually done by re on request, but they're very high quality. The automated ones are a bit dodge. Um, the user experience, it, it, it provides a good and um, consistent user experience either in the app or in the browser and they can, um, students can make notes and bookmarks on certain parts of videos. They can speed them up and slow them down. Um, they can share, create discussion posts that they can share with their peers. We have a huge amount of statistics on every, on the usage um, and as far as training is concerned, we, because we had such a head, because we had a head start and everything was in place, the ability, our ability to to ramp it up um, with the COVID crisis and the lockdown, was absolutely invaluable, and, I, and we wouldn't have got through without without all this having already been in place. We knew how to train on it. We knew how to um, roll it out. Um, so all we had to do was just ramp everything up massively. Um, the ability for lecturers to be able to manage their own content um, is, is, is it, it's very easy to do. Well, once they get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so and it's made them and you creating their own content very flexible. Um, so just our future plan is to um, increase, we, I'm looking currently now at actually integrating Zoom and Moodle. Um, this is to, um, increase our security of access to Zoom calls, uh, to Zoom classes, so um, have all our students pre-registered. Um, uh, which will make things more secure, um, and we'll also, we can do, we'll have things, to be able to do things like set up breakout rooms in advance, which is things that we use a lot. Um, okay, sorry, just kind of rushed through the end there. Um, 